When you be a soul winner, that means you do it as soon as you walk out these doors. Come on, preacher. Until you come back next week. Amen. Amen. Everywhere you go. Every person that you see, they have a soul. You gotta get a burden for souls. You just said you got the greatest insurance policy in the world. Yes, sir. Really? We're supposed to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. To every preacher. Amen. When you look at the gas attendant, you know what? That's a soul. That's just yes, not sir. somebody that yes, looks sir. mean and hateful. When you go out to eat, the person that serves you, that's a soul. Yes, sir. When you go to Bell, wherever you go to shop, or, or the Goodwill, you know what? That's a soul. People that you work with, your friends, your family, that's a soul. And you're going to face that person again. Yes, sir. Yeah. You're going to face that person again. Yeah, yeah. I am, preacher. I have an aunt and uncle. And they both are very close to dying. They're atheists. I took the time two weeks ago to write them a five-page letter and share Christ with them. I've been sending them the gospel in the mail. They can't stand the Bible. They can't stand God. They hate Him. They cuss Him. But I can't sit by and not tell them I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. But it don't make a difference if you're a preacher or not. I took the time to wrote a five-page type letter to tell them about Christ. And in the end of the letter, I said, one day, whether you accept Christ or not, you're going to remember this letter for all eternity. Yes, sir. I said, if you do accept Christ, you'll remember this letter for all eternity. I said, if you don't accept Christ, you also will remember this letter for all eternity. A few weeks ago, someone, when I say a few weeks, it's been three or four months ago, someone asked me to go visit Miss Jones in the hospital. It was her mother. She was very badly sick. And I went in there and introduced myself. I didn't know her from anybody on the street. I just told her that I was a preacher. And I was concerned about her soul. And she was a, a Catholic. Been raised a Catholic for her whole life. She was about 70 years old. And I said, I'd like to talk to you about Christ. And I said, if you were to die right now, Miss Jones, do you know where you'd go? She said, no, I don't. She said, I think I'd go to hell. I said, if you were to stand before God, and he said, Miss Jones, why should I let you in my heaven? What would you say? She said, I have no idea. Then I proceeded to tell her about Christ. As I got towards the end, tears began to run down her face. And she said, I want to be saved. She prayed the best she knew how and trusted Christ as her Savior. It was about 30 days later, Miss Jones died. I went to see her right before she died. She was getting very bad off. I saw her in the hospital. And I said, Miss Jones, I said, I'm preacher Mark. I said, Do you remember me? And she couldn't speak no more. She shook her head. I said, Miss Jones, I said, do you know where you go if you die today? I said, would you go to heaven or hell? Bless you. I said, I may never see you again on this earth, Miss Jones. But I said, I'm going to see you in heaven. Yes, amen. Amen. I said, I'm going to see you again. I said, it won't be long. But she died. She's in heaven now. I'm not patting myself on the back again. We got to be busy about winning souls. Yes, sir, preacher. That's the whole purpose of why we're here. Got to get a burden for souls. I love to preach. I like to preach. God's called me to preach. But if there's anything I like better, and that is to take and talk with a lost sinner like Miss Jones. And to see her be born again. Yes, sir. Amen. I enjoy that better than preaching, I'll be honest with you. Doesn't mean I don't like preaching. But I like to see that lost sin. Come to say Oh, yeah. Amen. I like to see them have a, yes, go from their old father, Satan, to a new father. Yes. I like to see them pass from death into life. Yeah. Yeah. I like to see them be born again. Yeah. 
Big old tears, crocodile tears, went in her eyes, and they just kept falling down her eyes. She accepted Christ, Miss Jones, that day. She opened her eyes, and boy, you could tell there was a difference. Had a big old smile on her face, and I said, Miss Jones, do you know where you go now? I go to heaven. Yeah, praise Big God. old smile. I said, praise God. And let me tell you the sad part. Her son was sitting there. I forget his name. I said, son, so you just seen your mama trust Christ as her Savior. You indicated why to go out. I asked him the same question, that you'd go to hell. I said, would you like to trust Christ? No, I think I'll do it later. He wants the insurance policy when it's going to be too late. Possible. Yes, we were going home another night. We stopped at a gas station, got some gas on the way home. Went inside to pay the attendant. The lady was standing there, paid for the gas, pulled out one of these gospel tracts. I said, Here, I'd like to give you one of these tonight. I said, Don't read it on the clock. I don't want you to get in trouble. She looked at it, turned it over. I don't want that. I don't need it. I said, have you ever trusted Christ as your Savior? She said, I don't need it. And I said, I'll leave it here for someone else. That breaks my heart. Yeah. That, that bothers me. Yes. I've been praying for that girl. I don't know who she is. That just bothers me. I'm sorry. Someone to reject Christ and to turn Him down when I know He's got so many good things for her. If she would just trust him. Amen. She don't know it, but she needs it. Amen. She's looking for those counterfeits. It's what she's getting. God says, hey, I got the greatest deal in the world. That's right. It's free. It's free. Amen. What you gonna do with it? What you gonna do with it? We've all said it's the greatest policy in all the world. What are you gonna do with it tonight? Amen. Amen. Let's stand at the feet.